Hey, this is Brian Cook. Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Today. I am broker owner of HomeSmart First Class Realty, and I'm here with one of my preferred lending partners who does this uh, weekly podcast with me, Greg Page. Greg, why don't you introduce yourself and, and tell them what we're going to store for him today. Hi, folks. Um, again, it's Greg Page with First Class Mortgage Company. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of programs that I think may be of interest. Uh, we did mention the MI Buster last week. We've got some updates on that. And also with us, we have Jim Drink from Quantic Bank, who's going to be talking about some of the QM products that we hinted at last week. All right. So let, let's, there are two quick things on that I want to, before we really break into anything. One, you mentioned some changes to the MI, which is the Mortgage Insurance Buster Program. The 10% is the new 20% down program. Right. What are the changes that have happened even since we had this conversation last week? Well, as, as we all know, we're in a very fluid environment. Uh, things change on a rapid basis. So one of our preferred lenders uh, rolled out a MI Buster program last week. And basically, uh, it allows for only 10.1% down to avoid the MI. So, you know, you've got a client that's buying a half a million dollar house. That's $50,000 less cash they need to bring to the table. Yeah, adds up quick. Um, it, it really does. And it also provides a better buying opportunity. They might be able to use those funds to buy a more expensive home or uh, utilize it for renovations, whatever they may need. But an extra 50 grand in their pocket goes a long way. Yep. Um, yesterday afternoon, the lender rolled out a new program uh, piggybacking on that. that it's now available for uh, refinancing. So anybody, That's amazing because I mean, yeah. you and I are doing a refi on my own property right now because right. my wife has dealt with my home not being fixed for long enough because <laughs> we've we've put into growing the business and, and trying to help as many people as possible. And now my wife's like, it's my time. It's time to fix our house. <laughs> and so you're helping me with that, which has been fantastic. How would how would this program, you know, change things? How would it differ? Well, again, as a real estate agent, you'd be able to reach out to your past clients and let them make them aware of this program because, you know, in some cases they could be paying a couple hundred dollars uh, a month on their MI insurance. And if they refied, they could save literally thousands of dollars a year uh, as a real estate agent reaching out, you're letting them know that you're not just kind of a one and done. Hey, I sold the house. Thank you very much. But you're looking out for their well being, their long-term uh, benefits, and saying we have new programs through lendership partners that we have with various lending organizations. This is a program that might you you might want to take so a look. At. Every real estate agent out there, and this is across the this is in the U.S. across every country, right? The U.S. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just want to make sure I don't want anybody to say, "Hey, it doesn't work in my area." No, it's available no. everywhere. And every no, real estate this agent is a nationwide program. Yes. Yeah, should be taking advantage of this opportunity to have those types of conversations and provide value to their agents. So the second thing you mentioned was non-QM. Now we understand what that means. But remember, a lot of our audience may very well not be real estate professionals, and they don't know what non-QM means. So, yeah. can you or Jim? Uh, explain what non-QM means and, and the value of it. Sure. Well, we've brought Jim in from Quantic Bank to, to address that. And why not let the professional talk about what they are and what they do? So, Jim. Thanks, Greg. Well, basically, non-QM are their loans that fit outside the box of conventional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA. Um, as far as Quantic Bank, you know, I'm a wholesale account executive for Quantic. We, we uh, I cover basically New England. I do have some uh, companies in other, other areas, but primarily New England. And I can guarantee you that I am the only account executive that can tell you that we can do owner-occupied, no-ratio loans. We can also do stated income loans. And the reason, you know, the first thing I'll tell you is the reason we can do it is because we have an exemption from the Department of Treasury because Quantic Bank is a CDFI lender. And what, what that is, means what is we're, CDFI mean? We're a community development financial institution. Okay. So Department of Treasury has given us a, an exemption from the ability to repay rule in Dodd-Frank in an effort to bring people that are sort of on the periphery, somebody that's, say, they're self-employed, they have money, they have great credit, but they just they don't have the income because they write everything off to buy a house. So they allow us the exemption in order to bring those people into the marketplace. And we do it primarily through two products. The first product is our no ratio, and it's truly like a no ratio. I mean, when the when you're filling out the application, 
you leave the income section blank and you leave the employment section blank. So we don't ask, we don't know what they do. Uh, we don't wanna know what they do. Um, we're making a lending, lending decision based on the appraisal, the down payment and the credit. And a lot of people say, wow, isn't that, isn't that dangerous? Well, I mean, the max LTV on that product is 75. So if you have someone that is putting down 25%, they have a 725 per score, uh, how much risk is there? How, what's the likelihood they're gonna walk away from that, that house? It's, it's pretty slim. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at a, you know, if a lot of brokers you know, do loans with a you know, 580 FICO score with 3% down FHA loan. Those are the loans that are gonna go, the people are gonna walk away from. They're not gonna walk away from mine. Yeah, so it's, um, it's a misnomer to people that this is sort of like um, what got us in, uh, in trouble during 2006, seven and eight with the uh, subprime loans. These aren't really subprime and these are good, Good borrowers, a lot down, but maybe they they're a business owner and they're not showing a lot of positive net income because everything's falling back into their business. For example, exactly, exactly. And, what what uh, other type of person is this a good program for? Uh, well, on that particular program, we don't ask. So I mean, it could be somebody that's, right. that's on a fixed income. Yep. It, it could be somebody that just switched jobs, say, and they're not in the same industry or they had a job gap and they fall outside of conventional. So a lot of times, you know, someone will stay in this product for a couple of years and then maybe move into a conventional loan somewhere down the road. Um, the other product that we have actually can go to 80 LTV, where this no ratio only goes to 75. To go to 80 LTV, we do, a, it's called, a, it's a light, we call it limited doc, but what it really is, is a stated income. So a borrower, it, it typically works for a self-employed person. The borrower does their own P&L. They literally can sit down at the kitchen counter with a cup of coffee, they do their own P&L, and that is the income that you use on the application. So you obviously want to make sure that the, the income has to work because, you know, we do have to keep the DTI technically less than 50. I always tell workers, you know, make sure it's less than 40, but it has to, it has to make sense too. Well, we, we're, just, we're making sure here just so folks, because we understand the lingo. Some say p &L is a profit and loss statement. So any Correct. business really should be doing a monthly profit and loss statement. How many, how many months back on a p &L do you need to see? 12 months. So it's the okay. last 12 you want months. for the last year. Yep. Now, you only have to be self-employed for one year, but you have to be in the same oh, line. So that's interesting because a lot of banks require at least two years of showing uh, a profit. Yeah, for us, no, nope. it's one year, but you have to be in the same line of work for two years. So okay. how do we validate that they've been in the same line of work for two years? We actually ask for a CPA letter on all of, all of our light dock loans. And uh, the CPA letter just says how long they've been self-employed, how long they've been in the same line of work, how do they file their taxes, um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, that we do that loan is is actually uh, is about three quarters of a percent lower in the interest rate, and you get a higher LTV. So we're actually starting to do more of those because we made some adjustments in our pricing, um, and we also made an adjustment in our LTV going a little bit higher. So with that, I can go to eighty LTV on a single family owner rock. You know, our max LTV on all of our products. If you're a, a multifamily, three or four units is seventy. I can go to seventy five with a, on a two unit. All right. So um, LTV for the folks who don't know, loan to value. So if it's a hundred thousand dollar property, and you have uh, eighty percent LTV, means that they had to put down twenty thousand dollars, and you're financing the other eighty percent. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we do allow gifts for down payment and closing costs, and we we do need reserves with this with this product. So if the loan is less than half a million, you have to have three months reserves. Okay. And when I say reserves, it's principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. As reserves, if it's over half a million, less than a million at six months, anything over a million dollar loan, you have to have 12 months of, uh, of reserves with our products. Is Quantic Bank the servicer or do you sell these? Uh, we do service them, but the loan itself usually gets, they do get sold usually within 12 months. Okay. Yeah. Right. Any, any else add there, around? Greg? You're sort of quiet. No, no, I'm just, uh, I'm just thrilled to hear that. Uh, the opportunity for people uh, has been expanded again, because as we all know, after Dodd-Frank in 2015, when these rules and regulations were put in place, it really limited the ability of a lot of people to be able to purchase homes and, and uh, standard programs. I mean, in today's economy, there are a lot of what we call gig workers out there. And these are people that are driving Ubers, DoorDash, whatever it may be, starting businesses. I mean, there's a lot of people who simply left their nine to five to go out and find alternative ways uh, to make an income. And the past uh, regulations would have inhibited their ability to purchase a home. 
but but again, uh, having these types of programs, especially in today's economy, with that we're experiencing more and more people looking for alternative ways to derive income, be it like uh, you said, the DoorDash, Uber drivers, business owners, it's 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 a changing game. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a very fluid situation. So organizations like Gyms with Quantic Bank that are providing these alternative revenue uh, lending platforms is a great asset, obviously, to our industry, but to your to your real estate agents also. To yeah, help. But, but beyond that, I mean, I mean, we we can make the introduction as to, I mean, these these are programs that are out there that everyone everyone always has stuck in their mind. They need 20 percent down to be able to purchase a home. They don't realize all the different programs out there to be able to do it. And with our changing economy and the type of jobs that people are moving to, a lot of the traditional platforms, people won't be able to get financing. So what Quantic has put together here, are it, it's offering people who are starting to go to those alternative type employment jobs where they're self-employed, but they're um, working for, say, Amazon, where Amazon's always looking for delivery, you know, people and people starting to create their own business based on doing deliveries, uh, whether it be of Amazon product, of food products, of you know, driving people uh, as you know, personal taxi services. Uh, excuse me, on and on. So this creates a whole other opportunity for people who did not think that they could purchase. Now it's opening the opportunity for them uh, to be able to do so. How would how would an agent sort of explain a program like this to an end consumer? Like if they're having a conversation with someone, what would be some maybe uh, key things about that individual that the agent would go, hey, wait a second. I think I get, you know, I know someone who has the right program to be able to help you out. Like who, who would that person be? Hey, I, well, I can answer from from our perspective, uh, yeah. you know, if, if a realtor is trying to pre-qualify somebody, you know, right off the bat, I mean, if you find out that their income is inconsistent, um, if they're, they are, they're self-employed and, you know, pe- people are self-employed, they, they get it. They know that, hey, my income's not that great, um, you know, because I do I do write everything off. Um, the first thing that pops into a lot of brokers' mind is, is to do like maybe a bank statement product where they you know, add up the deposits over the last 12 or 24 months, and then they come up with the income. And I can tell you, and Greg can tell you as well, being a broker, those are a nightmare for the, for, a, for a broker because of the fact that over the last 24 months, you know there's going to be bounced checks, you know there's going to be large deposits. Um, with us, instead of doing all that and going through two years of bank statements, the borrower does their own p and That's it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the difference in the stream. And, and by the way, that, that P&L is certified by their accountant. It's not the only no, person that sees the that has the letter is, that says you've been doing this work for at least two years, but the PL, it's it's really on your honor, sort of thing. Unaudited, yes. It's it's unordered. The borrower does it themselves. The the actual accountant that writes the letter doesn't even have to know about the the uh the PL. They never see it, they don't know anything about it. All they're doing is saying, Yes, this person's been self-employed for you know, however long, a year, two years. Um, they file a, 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 their uh, S corp or their they file a Schedule C. Um, that's all we're looking for from the accountant. We just need some verification that yeah, this person really is self employed. All right. Um, so for the end for the end user out there, the consumer who's listening to this, and they send this out. This this sounds too good to be true. This this sounds kind of scammy. Um, I mean, what would you say to someone who who says that? I, I can assure you, we we are closing loans every month. Uh, we're busy. We're doing millions and millions and millions of loans, of dollars worth of loans every every month. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been doing it at, with Quantic for 14 months. Every month, I'm signing up new brokers and closing more loans. People are skeptical in the beginning because they they hear they hear about Dodd Frank and oh, how can you do that now? Um, you know, what I do is when I sign up a broker, I I send them all the information. We're a CDFI lender. This is how we're doing it. It's, this is spelled out in a three page you know article that goes through everything step by step. You know, we're absolutely, I mean, we're a FDIC insured bank. So what, why would we ever do anything that would jeopardize that? So, uh, you know, I, I've been doing this since 1992. I started doing, we were doing handwritten, handwritten 1003s. And um, I can tell you, we close loans. It takes 30 to 45 days, like, like a normal loan process, but we, we do close loans. And, and I will say most of our customers, most of our borrowers, they're really happy because before they sit down with Greg, you know, the day before they were told by somebody else, you, you know, you can't buy a house. And they sit down with Greg and Greg goes, wait a minute, I've got this product. Uh, you can buy a house. 
they're like, what? The rate's a little higher. I mean, our, our floor rate is 475, so it's a little bit higher than you're going to get. Mm-hmm. But people are just happy to get a home. You know, they know they're going to pay a little bit more. And to be honest, when I started the mortgage business, and Greg probably said the same, <laughs> rates were 10%. So for yeah, somebody to come in, my first home I bought in '99 was 10. percent Yeah, yeah, a stated income loan at 475. I'll I'll take that all day long. No, historically, that, well. it's either that or I'll rent for the rest of my life. You know, so right. people are uh, most borrowers are happy. I mean, they they get they get the fact that the rate's going to be a little higher. Higher, like so, I said, it's, so out, outside of the documentation, know. it's a little bit different. Is there anything at all that's different about the process? Um. Well. We do verify the down payment. So if there's a if there's a hang up, I, I would say it's you know, the hang up is in the um, down source of the down payment, because a lot of people who are self employed, you know, they their bank statements are a little funky because they, you know they're not reporting a lot of income. So we have to document it. So that sometimes takes a little bit of extra effort. Um, but the rest the rest of it's pretty you know it's pretty simple. We do have some funky forms that we sign have people sign because this, we're a CDFI lender. But that's just really a matter of having somebody sign it. It's not. It's nothing. Nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but like anything, appraisals take a long time to get in. So that's always you know factored in. Right, right now, everybody's busy with appraisals. They're taking sometimes three weeks to come in. So um, that that is, is a little bit bit of a hold up. Um, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we're taking out of the equation the most difficult part, which is the income. I mean, we're just completely removing it with a no ratio product. Right. So, you know, so it, it, I'm not saying that process is simple. It's, it can be a little bit onerous because of the, the nature of the business. I, I remember said back in 1992, I started writing hand, handwritten 1003s. The business was a lot easier back then than it is now. Um, you know, now there's so many moving parts that you never could have imagined back then. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, you know, the process moves along. We close loans. I've had one loan rejected in the last 14 well, that years. Was, that was my next question is how one. many have fallen apart? Uh, I mean, we have appraisals like everything else. Appraisals are coming short sometimes. Sure. Um, I've had borrowers change their mind. I've had borrowers change their mind at the closing table. Um, that's just the nature of the business. Um, I've had one loan that was actually turned down. It was a person that about five years ago he fell behind in their mortgage. So they had to, they went into some sort of forbearance agreement and then they came out of it. And then last year they went into another forbearance agreement. Um, we can do it if someone's coming out of a forbearance agreement, but we don't like somebody come out of Two forbearance agreements. So that's the only one <laughs> that I have that was actually a term down. Sure. Um, sure. You know, I, I, like I said, mostly if, if the loan doesn't go through, it's 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 an appraisal issue. Um, it's just something like that. But most of most of them come through. And the other thing is we do a lot of refinances. I do a cash out refi, no ratio, up to seventy LTV. So good. I mean, and we have no limit on the amount of money that somebody can walk away from a table with. I did have a gentleman who's a former NFL player who's a was a Florida deal. The guy's house is worth two and a half million dollars. He did a cash out loan, a 70 LTV, walked away from the closing table with like 1.4, 1.5 million. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't ask really, you know, what you're doing with it. We just ask a letter, you know, you know, and every every letter comes back the same. It says for future investment. Um, but we have no limit on the cash out, you know, we're, we're, so you, you can walk away with a million dollars if you have that much equity. So and, it's, a, and- it's a great product. And apparently this, this gentleman wanted to, Take that money and buy other properties, buy commercial properties, and that, that's what he did. And Jim, on the forbearance issue, I believe they have to have made three payments. Correct. Yep. Yep. I have one right now. It's a $1.2 million loan. The guy came out of forbearance in, in September. So I have October's payment, November's payment, December's payment. We're good. Wow. <laughs> I mean, these are all the things that for the average consumer has no idea about this type of stuff. Most realtors and most real estate agents don't know about these types of products as well, because it's, it really is important for an agent to be well-versed on the financing side, to understand different programs out there to make those introductions, because there, there may be a way to help. I've had plenty of agents come in who are trying to put something together and the person wasn't able to qualify, probably a lot of times self-employed and, and understanding that there are alternate programs out there uh, that could help them is another way to be able to serve your clients and help them reach their goal of the, uh, either being a homeowner or being able to refi that, like myself, refi the house so we can actually uh, complete the remodel. Um, it just, without knowing about these products, sometimes it just limits your ability to be able to help your clients. Well, you know, Ryan, after the 2015 regulations rolled out, it all became kind of cookie cutter. And everybody fell into that mold where it had to fit inside the box. 
and uh, the box is widened now. I mean, the box is, has has opened up, and and as I said earlier, it's a very fluid situation. Uh, things are changing daily. Where I'm getting emails, you know, just on the rate. I, I, we've got all these lenders, and I get two emails a day. Rates are good. Rates are bad. It's 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 moving right. very very quickly. And we we all know, can agree, I think, that in 2022, with inflation going the way it is, we are probably going to be seeing some rates going up. That said, they're still historically low. I mean, I sold 15% interest rates at one point right. you know, back in the 90s. And, and if you if you need a home, as Jim said, at four and three quarters, it's still better than renting. Still, That's right. 100%. So, Jim, in, in wrapping this up, you just want to give a quick summary of what these programs are and, and um, what are the, you know, the big bullet points that people need to uh, know about them? Well, the, the big thing and, and what we lend on is credit and down payment. That, that's pretty much it. Um, we do source and season your down payment. And, and the thing about us, too, is we only ask for 30 days of bank statements. So we don't, we don't go back 60 days, 90 days at a lot of conforming lenders. We just want 30 days. That's all brokers. If they have enough money in there to close in one account, don't give me five. Just give me one. Mm-hmm. Try to keep it as simple as possible. But, um, you know, again, we're looking at 720 FICO score to get the our max LTV. Um, but our minimum FICO score is a 680. So any any broker, realtor, um, you know, just keep that keep that in mind because that's the first thing you know, we look at is the, is the credit score. And you do have to have three trade lines open and active for 12 months. Okay. So fantastic. So that is our show uh, today, Real Estate Today. We appreciate our guest, uh, Jim Dring with Quantic Bank, talking about some alternative programs for folks who are self-employed or gig workers, um, either for the purchase or refi uh, on their existing property. Greg, you got any parting words for us today? No, I'm looking forward to next week. We'll have another special guest and we'll keep that on the wraps until until we hear so Ooh, see, i don't even know who it is so it's really <laughs> under wraps fantastic all right i appreciate everyone and thank you so much for paying attention if you want to please uh please subscribe to our blog post or our youtube channel where you can uh, get regular updates on our real estate today podcast we look you know look forward to seeing you again and thanks so much for participating thanks, thank Tom. you everyone take see care you all.